Sadly, summer is over, and that makes me feel a little, well, you know. But hey, fall is here. We got apples and pumpkins and people who are obsessed with pumpkin spice everything, so there's plenty to be excited about, especially pretzels. Soft, chewy, delicious pretzels with nacho cheese. So grab your later hose and let's tie ourselves into a pretzel or just make pretzels. Alrighty, so starting with our pretzel dough, great recipe attached below, we'll get our water in a bowl, to which we'll feed it with a little bit of sugar, and then we will add our instant yeast, sprinkle that over top. Instant, we can just let it sit for a couple minutes to just let it prove and kind of eat on the sugar. Then we'll throw in our melted butter or butter substitute. We'll add in our all-purpose flour about a third at a time, along with our salt, definitely salt after the yeast process, not during or before. It'll look like this wet kind of porridge, if you will. Then just keep adding the flour until you're getting more of a dough ball consistency. All in all, takes about five to ten minutes you can do it with a machine but so easy to do by hand speaking of by hand for this last part i like to just knead it for a couple minutes on my work surface and there you have one beautiful pretzel dough ball so we are going to let this prove for about an hour so we will get a bowl add a little bit of oil into it rub it around so nothing sticks throw it in your bowl cover it with a towel and then about an hour later or until it has doubled in size you will see this big puffy wonderful mass of pretzel dough super soft super spongy exactly what we're looking for to make some really great pretzels so now that this is exactly how we want it, we're going to get it out of our bowl with ease, put it onto our work surface, and I'm going to cut this into six equal portions, so first right down the middle, and then I'll do thirds on each side. Uh, this is a half batch of the recipe attached below, so it's going to make six very nice sized pretzels. Full batch obviously will make 12, but once you have your individual pieces, just have fun with it. You can just really roll it out into a rope, just do it in between your hands. It might take a little bit of practice, but you get one long thin rope, and then just tie it around up into the U shape and over on itself. You can use your fingers to kind of create those holes, and then just put a little bit of pressure where you want to attach them and this dough is so perfect for this that it really just kind of makes it so easy and there you have a really nice pretzel it doesn't have to be perfect we'll run through this again roll it out into a nice thin rope get your u-shape fold it back on over to itself and there you go make it a nice pretzel it doesn't have to be perfect make it perfect for you once you have them all shaped i like to just put them on a sheet pan with some parchment so they don't stick and transfer them over to their jacuzzi of sorts and this is what really makes a pretzel a pretzel you want to get some nice boiling water make sure that there is plenty of room for our pretzel and now we're going to add in our baking soda. This is what's going to give it the crust that we want for a signature pretzel. Add it in slowly or else you're going to have a science experiment, kind of like a volcano. Give it a quick stir to dissolve the baking soda and it will look normal again. Then we'll, we'll drop in our pretzels one at a time. You could do more, uh, but I'm just doing one at a time just to really show you how the process works. 30 seconds is all we want. You can see it puffs up really nicely. It's still super soft and has a unique texture. We'll do this one more time. Again, just 30 seconds is all you need. Any longer than that, it may develop a metallic taste. Super and easy to do, but a very, very important important step to give us a really nice crust. So now that all these bad boys have had a chance to soak within the baking soda bath, we are going to give them a quick egg wash. This is egg wash with a little bit of water, and I'm just going to give a quick brush to each of these. I actually did a double brush, so I did each one once, and then I went back and gave each one a second coat, just to give it a really, really nice crust. Now, of course, we're going to salt these. Just a little bit goes a long way. If you have pretzel salt, cool. I just use regular kosher salt, not as big, but still works out really well. And pow pow, and Indeed, after about 12 minutes at 425, you will have these golden brown perfections. So soft, the crust came out absolutely perfect. You can see the salt, even though it's just regular kosher salt. While we're letting these cool down a bit, let's get into our cheese sauce. So we'll melt down a fat tablespoon of butter, to which I'm going to add onion and jalapeno. I like to cut them up super small because I like a little bit of not only the flavor that they provide, obviously, but the texture as well. And a fat heaping teaspoon of garlic into here. Cook this over low to medium heat just to kind of cook it down. We're not really worried about whether we get colored or not. We just want it to be cooked through. Then we're going to take a fat tablespoon of flour because we're making a roux. So just sprinkle this in over low heat. Give it a good stir to really cook all the flour out. And then once it looks something like this, you are ready to add in your liquid. Our liquid in this case is going to be milk. Almost any variety will work. And this is about a cup and a half. So now you just want to whisk that in there. Again, this is all over low heat. We just really kind of want to scrape the flour off the bottom and, and get it off of the vegetables a little bit so it really incorporates incorporates with the milk and really thickens up our sauce. Now we're going to add in our cheese. I have cheddar on the left, pepper jack on the right. You can use whatever cheese you want. I just really like those for my cheese sauces. Again, over low heat, we're going to just slowly sprinkle in our cheese. Definitely start really slow in the beginning, adding little bits at a time, but as you go on, you can add more and more. It will really thicken up, not only from the roux, but from the actual cheese melting into it itself. The finer you grate the cheese, uh, the better it's going to be for this, and I definitely recommend grating the 
cheese yourself and you will have this wonderful cheese sauce. If you want it perfectly smooth, you can strain it at this point, but this is exactly how I want it. Season it with salt and pepper and I recommend serving it while it is nice and hot and liquid gold to perfectly complement these chewy, wonderfully crusty pretzels. It really is amazing how you can develop this super nice crust in such a short amount of time and I can't wait to dive into these bad boys. They are big, they are fluffy, they are soft. And my favorite part about these is when you tear them away, I mean, just look at the texture that these have. So soft, so chewy. Developing that kind of texture in such a short amount of time is really amazing. They really taste absolutely phenomenal. They smell incredible. The only thing that can make them better is this hot cheese sauce. So I'm going to get to tearing and ripping away and dunking these bad boys. I mean, this is like being in mall pretzel heaven when like mall pretzels were actually amazing. And one last close up just to really show you that although these are incredibly easy and quick to do, just how amazing they come out, even though they're homemade. I mean, they really come out as good as any pretzels that you're going to find anywhere. That is the texture that we're going for. I'm going to keep mercilessly ripping these apart and dipping them into our cheese sauce. It just has the most subtle kick. It's just so perfectly creamy and complements these pretzels beautifully. I'm telling you, these are the easiest and best homemade pretzels that you will ever taste. Pair them with a cold, tall Oktoberfest, and that's good. Yeah?